it's almost the end of the MLS season, which means it's time to pick our end of the year MLS awards. Now, who I pick is going to be a little controversial because not everyone's going to agree with who should win each certain award, Defender of the Year, MVP, etc. But this was a list that took me a while to to, uh, to to make just because there's been a lot of players in contentious races that have been so close. This is one of the hardest lists I've had to make. But I've settled on this. I'm going to roll with it. And I'll be curious to see if you guys agree or disagree with who I picked. And You'll have to let me know in the comment section if you don't agree with who I picked, who you would have for each certain award. Now, before we get to the video, please make sure you like this video down below. Subscribe to the channel. We're trying to hit 5,000 subscribers before the end of the year. I think we can do it. We're less than 700 away. So please make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and hit that little bell notification so you never miss any of my videos. Now, we're going to start off with most valuable player, MVP. Now, this one is definitely going to be controversial because uh, there's uh, so many different angles of who you would pick and what you consider uh, the, the most valuable player to represent. Record, stats, uh, just qual the eye test on the field. Um, now, this is one that's changed a couple times over the weeks for me just because there's been new uh, variables and, and, and um, data and just my mind's changed and I, I think I have to go with Lionel Messi, uh, the goat. And he hasn't played as many games. He's only played 18 games as of when this video has made, been made and it'll be 19 on Saturday, but he has 17 goals and he has 15 assists. He has better stats than some of these guys or most of these guys do in 30 games, you know, played 10, 12, 13 more games than him. And he has been a difference maker for, for inter Miami. They have won some games without him, but this is my main point. If Messi had, don't add any statistics, uh, goals or assists to, for him. Don't add anything to him. The only thing add is just add eight more games to his end of year stats. Eight games, no goals, no assists. Keep the same stats, add eight more games. This wouldn't even be a conversation. With 17 assists and 12, or 17 goals and 12 assists, Messi would be the unanimous MVP. But people are trying to say he shouldn't win it because he hasn't played enough games. And I was in that boat. But, Look at what he's done in those amount of games, the 18 games. He's done incredible. He's almost scoring a goal a game. He's almost got a, a, an assist a game. He's one of a kind, and I think that he has been the most val valuable player on the best team in the league, and I don't think this would be a discussion in, in any other uh, season if he'd played some more games. So if you would give it to him because he played eight more games, why would you not give it to him if he's putting up the same statistics in less games? That means he's being more productive. Uh, if he'd played... 27 matches he probably would have had 30 goals and, and 25 assists so i think messi is the mvp now my close second would have been cucho hernandez who's had a great season on a great team but i just think of what messi has done in the time he's played is more impressive because he's got more um goal contributions or equal con goal contributions in 10 less matches so messi is my 2024 mls mvp now, my coach of the year, this one is a slam dunk for me. This one was one that was not hard for me to decide. I think it has to be Tata Martino. Tata Martino took over an inner Miami team that was one of the worst teams in the league in 2023 and almost got them in the playoffs last year. Uh, but he uh, built this team with, with some of his connections, his scouting, added certain pieces, changed the formation, changed the style of play. And this is a well-oiled machine. And on top of it, they Saturday have an opportunity to break the MLS all-time points record. 73 points by the New England Revolution is the record right now. They have 71 going into this match, so they have a chance to break the record. Now, they've already won the Supporter Shield, so they're, they have the best record in the league, right? And most of the time, that guarantees you the MLS Coach of the Year award regardless. I mean, that's normally you win that, you're guaranteed to win Coach of the Year most of the time, right? Now, there's a few outliers in, that have happened in, in circumstances, but I think that Tata Martino deserves this. Look at the injuries he's had, right? He was able to win games without Messi and Suarez and Matias Rojas and Diego Gomez. He was able to win games in the summertime when these players were missing for the Olympics, Copa America, Euros, whatever it may be. He was able to win some games. And he is, it's, you have to also look into what he is um, uh, managing, right? He's managing a team with a lot of big personalities. He's managing a team in 
a, uh, a, a city, an area that demands winning. Uh, he is, you know, he's tasked with, with, a, with a very tough job and he was able to, uh, on the verge of breaking an MLS record. So I think you have to give Tata Martino the MLS coach of the year. And I don't think it's frankly, I don't think it's frankly close. I think he is, is the runaway MLS coach of the year. You'll have to let me know if you agree with that down below. Now, the newcomer of the year I have is a man that you're familiar. If you follow me on Twitter, or if you follow me on here, you know, I like, I like this player a lot. I think he's very good. I think he has a chance to break MLS records. I have LA Galaxy winger Gabriel Peck. Now, Gra Gabriel Peck is, is like one of the greatest prospects I've seen in MLS for what he can do and his ability to just change the game. His pace, his creativity, his dribbling. Uh, he can make something out of nothing. And he's got that X factor that you don't normally see in Major League Soccer. He's got 15 goals and 14 assists in his first year. And he started off kind of slow. Like he had to adapt. He didn't start right away. And he found his stride and he's changed this, this Galaxy team. This is he's a huge reason and why the LA Galaxy are the first place team in the Western Conference and why they have been revitalized, right? Now, Will Kuntz obviously has helped as well, but he brought him in and he he, you know, you can bring in the player, but they have to do it on the pitch in order to really change things up. And he's done that. Him, Peck, and Paintsel have done a really good job. Uh, of, of DPs of, of transforming this team. And I, I think that he is the clear cut uh, newcomer of the year. Now, Suarez definitely was, was there in contention at a time, but he's kind of slowed down as the seasons went on. I think you have to give it to Gabriel Peck, especially with how well the galaxy has played. And I think he has been their best player this season, in my opinion, even though Ricky Bouge is a close second, but I would give the edge to Gabriel Peck for the best player in the LA Galaxy, and he is the clear newcomer of the year for me in Major League Soccer in 2024. Now, young player of the year. A lot of people pick Diego Gomez of Inter Miami. He's had a great season. I think he's been one of their most consistent players in Major League Soccer in 2024. But I have to give it to Diego Luna. Diego Luna has been a... He has ascended, and he has been... Uh, I had a breakout season in 2023. He had five goals and three assists and people were wanting to know what Diego Luna could do in 2024 when he really got the opportunity to be the guy. And he made the most of his opportunity. He had uh, seven goals and 12 assists. So he got, he scored two more goals, but he had nine more assists in 2024 and his team improved. They're six points better off right now than they were in 2023. So the team improved he had a better season. I'd say he's their best player on the team. It was Chicho Arango, but I'd, I'd say it's Diego Luna at this point. And he won't be in Major League Soccer for long because of how talented he is. Now, will he go to Liga Mekis? Will he go to Serie A? Will he go to La Liga or any European team? I don't know, but I don't think he's going to be in Major League Soccer for long, nonetheless. And I think he's just had a really good season. He is the most important piece of why RSL has been very good. And I'd like to see him get a national team call up soon. Uh, just because I want to see what he can do. He's only 21 years old. He's got a bright, bright future. I would give the nod to Diego Luna. Let me know if you agree with that. If you'd pick Diego Gomez, I, I like I like Diego Luna. Um, now, as far as goalkeeper, I got Christian uh, Kalina. Kalina has made incredible saves for Charlotte FC. He has bailed them out so many times this season in big games and, and single-handedly been able to keep them in the playoff contention, right? Um, without him, I don't even know if this is a playoff team. Um, you know, he he's one of the best goalkeepers, shot stoppers I've seen since I've been covering this league. The only other person that I would say in, in recent memory who I would probably put ahead of him is Petrovic from uh, New England a couple years ago and um, uh, Andre Blake with the Philadelphia Union. But uh, Kalina is special and he just signed a new deal with Charlotte. So he's going to be there for the foreseeable future and they have a great goalkeeper. And I don't really think that it's close. Maybe Matt freeze freeze had a really good season too, but I would say Kalina has been the uh, best goalkeeper in major league soccer this year. Um, and that seems like, well, that's the consensus with a lot of people. Um, I think he needs to be rewarded and, and hopefully more people will know the Kalina name if you don't already and, and watch how special he is. Um, but yeah, he he single handedly has kept Charlotte um, in many games this year, and uh, they're lucky to have him. If they didn't have him, it, it could have been a lot of trouble for you know for the team. Now this is going to be another controversial one. Okay, a lot of people are picking Stephen Moreira. 
for Defender of the Year, I am going to pick Jordy Alba. Now, let me explain why. Jordy Alba's defense or defending has been above average. Now, you could say Steve Moreira has been a better defender, but one of the X factors for me are reasons why I would pick Jordy Alba. Look at his statistics. Look out and watch the games, all the creativity and chances he creates. He has four goals this year and 12 assists as a fullback, which is unheard of, especially in Major League Soccer. What he does in the attack cannot be uh, overlooked. Cannot be overlooked. And I don't know if a lot of people are going to pick him as defender of the year, but you have to look at what he also does in the attack along with his defending. He is Miami's best defender, and it's not really close. Now, it's a shaky defense, right? But the center backs, you know, just the turnstile, no consistency there. Total Avales and, and, you know, Martinez came in. We'll see what he can do. And, and wing gets, you know, hit or miss on the on the right wing on the right at right back. But Jordy Alba's had a great season. He's going to be an MLS uh, all eleven, starting eleven. All, you know, best eleven. He's he's definitely going to be in there. Four goals and and twelve assists is unheard of for a fullback in Major League Soccer. Um, I I think he's he's my defender of the year. Um, I don't know if you'll agree with that. I know Steve Marrera obviously is should deserve a lot of love. I mean, he's had a great season with Columbus, but. I got I got Jordi Alba. I'd like to know what you guys think about that. Um, I think that's more probably I'll probably be in the minority on that one, but I, I just don't think you could overlook what he's done. Uh, uh, if, you know, with four goals and the twelve assists this season. Now this one is pretty. I think a slam dunk as well. It's comeback player of the year, Lewis Morgan. Um, Lewis Morgan had a pretty nasty hip injury last year. He only made like five league appearances, six appearances in total all season long. Um, and he's since he got traded to the Red Bulls a couple years ago, he's been really good. But this year he had a bounce back year. Red Bulls are making the playoffs. He scored 13 goals, six assists. He's arguably their best player. Maybe Forsberg is better, but you know, it's close, right? Lewis Morgan's definitely a, a, a key piece in the puzzle. And he came back after a pretty bad hip injury, scores 13 goals, uh, six assists. I think that it's he's the runaway comeback player of the year. I don't know if you agree with that, but that's that's who I have. It'll be interesting to see what he does in the playoffs for the Red Bulls. Um, and it's good to see him back, right? It's not always easy to come back from a bad injury and produce like you did before you left, uh, especially missing essentially a whole entire year, only playing, like I said, six matches in total last year. That is really rough. Um, but yeah, guys, that's my awards for the 2024 MLS season. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Do you agree with my picks? Do you disagree? Who would you have? Let me know down below. And also, like I said, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're trying to hit 5,000 by the end of this year. With your help, I think we can. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that little bell notification so you never miss a video. And until next time, guys, I will see you all soon.